Hello, everyone, and welcome to another great episode of Marriage, of Marriage Matters. Matters. Uh, for those of you who are watching us for the very first time, my name is Glenn Coleman, and this is my queen, my wife, my gift from God. I like all of those. Keep going. Oh, I was going to let you say your name. <laughs> Hi, I'm Tanya Coleman. All right. And so this is the show. We call it Marriage Matters. This is a show where we talk about marriage matters because we believe that marriage, marriage matters. matters. So I hope you got that. Um, so as you can see, we're in like in a kind of a different uh, environment. Um, you know, we're, we are uh, on the go these days. You know, we have two. Well, we have a teenager and a preteen. And a preteen. Uh, and so they keep us pretty busy. So, you know, while they're doing something, we're say, you know, we're going to bring all of our equipment with us and we're going to set up and we're going to record a show. So it's a little different, but, uh, you know, hey, we got to do what we got to do to keep, keep yep, this to thing going, to keep bringing you the tips yep. and the tricks to enhance your life and your marriage. That's right. Tips and tricks. Tips and tricks. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so before we get started with today's show, you know, we're literally, as we're taping this, or I don't know, I guess videoing, I know I'm just kind of old school, we're taping it, <laughs> um, but as we're recording this, how about that, as we're shooting this video, mm -hmm. uh, we just left the Moss, first Moss Bluff, Moss Bluff Baptist marriage conference. Yes. Shout out to First Moss Bluff. Yes, it was phenomenal. I mean, we it talked about awesome. this last week, and yeah. if you didn't, guys, if you didn't go, you really, 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 really missed an awesome time. Mm -hmm. um, and like we said, you know, we don't just talk about this stuff. We're, uh, we, we don't just talk about it. We be about it, right? Yes. yes. And, and we just believe in doing what it takes to ensure, because here's the deal, deal, guys. You know, we never make the claim or we never try to say that our marriage is perfect. Absolutely. And so we're in this, and this part of us doing this is even working on our marriage, yep. right? But we went this weekend at some, some husband and wife time uh, at uh, First Moss Bluff in Moss Bluff, Louisiana, um, and it was just a phenomenal weekend. It was. Um, some of our favorite, one of our favorite couples when it comes to, I guess, marriage, marriage ministry, ministry yeah. or marriage counseling mm -hmm. or whatever you want to call it, Dave and Ashley Willis, yes. they were in the house. They did a phenomenal job. Yes, Actually, we got a chance to, to meet them and yeah, talk to them. Chit-chat with them and, the uh, and it was just great. Very um, down to very earth. Very down to very earth. Humble. Just like they are yeah. on stage, just yeah. like they are on the podcast. Mm -hmm. Um, that's how they were in person. And by the way, if you do not follow Dave and Ashley Willis, we mm -hmm. highly recommend you do so. The name of their podcast is the Naked Marriage Podcast. Mm -hmm. And it's all about just being open and honest, not just physically naked, but right. spiritually, spiritually naked. naked. Uh, yeah, although naked. physically naked yes. is good too. Yes. <laughs> so anyway, uh, so we had a great time this weekend, met some fantastic people. Mm -hmm. um, and so it was just not only just having an opportunity to visit with other couples, but just going and visiting an another church family right, right. Um, was just a great opportunity. It's a great experience. Uh, met some people that I didn't even know fellowship there. I'd been right. knowing these people and had a chance to talk to them uh, in a different light. So it was just yeah. great. Mm -hmm. You had anything to add about that? No, it was just, it was really great. It was um, it was a lot of fun. The, um, the energy was high. Um, they did an excellent job, you know, the church did in preparing and setting things up so that people were comfortable. Um, and just, just really nice. It was really nice. Yeah. And the great, one of the great things about this conference, you know, I like free stuff, right? Mm -hmm. Who doesn't like free? Yes. And they gave away some great, some great gifts. Gifts. Yeah. Um, the first night we got a book, it was like 50, 52 ways to date or date something ideas, like, like that. Like for date yeah. night. We'll, we'll show that book to you next week. Yeah. And in that book was a $25 gift card to 121 Bistro. Yes, can't so, wait to use that. And again, so if you didn't go, sorry for you, but you missed out <laughs> on some great stuff. And then today we got the free book, uh, David Ashley's book, um, The Naked Marriage. Uh, they have this book. The podcast is called The Naked Marriage and also the book. Yeah. And so we've been wanting to read this book. I kind of uh, skimmed through some of it, they, uh, some excerpts of it online. But um, we're just so, so, so excited about this book. And it was free just yep. for going to the conference. So, yep. again, great time this weekend. Anything else you want to add about this weekend? Um, it was just a great experience to hear other couples' uh, stories and testimonies. A lot of 
uh, open, honest discussion and vulnerability about some very practical um, issues that yeah. people are having in marriage. You know, um, they addressed a, a very big issue that we will probably talk about later on um, that, you know, we are living in a day and age and in a society, and this is not new. It's been going on for years where a lot of men and women um, have pornography um, addictions and things like that. And it, it was addressed in such a um, open way where I believe people who needed freedom the door was open for yeah. freedom to take place yeah. in their lives. And that to me was, um, was phenomenal. Yeah. Yeah. So again, great weekend guys. And if you didn't go, man, I, I you know, I really wish, you know, more people would have came out, but anyway, mm -hmm. it was great. Um, so during that, uh, during this weekend, Dave and Ashley, they talked about something that I, I want to talk about today. Mm -hmm. And, um, they, they, they said, um, they told the story about, um, when uh, she was doing something around the house, I'm not gonna go into detail mm -hmm. because I don't wanna give you all, give it all away because you should have been at the conference. So. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but she was doing something around the house and Dave asked her, you know, did she need help? Mm -hmm. And she's like, no, I'm fine. Mm -hmm. But in actuality, she wasn't fine. Mm -hmm. And then when Dave came back from his leisurely run, I think he went on a run, mm -hmm. um, and he, she just kind of blew up at him mm -hmm. and it just kind of triggered some things in me. Mm -hmm. um, and I wanna talk about that. Okay. And I talk about, um, you know, being, and we talk about this a lot on this, on this podcast, mm -hmm. but being open and honest and being able to, to express and talk about your true feelings. Yep. Um, and, you know, again, there's, there's so many things, and this is just me. I'm not saying that um, it's, this is across the board, but just my, I can talk about my experience. Mm -hmm. But number one, as a male, mm -hmm. you know, we're not taught, we're taught to not, to talk about feelings and how mm -hmm. that made me feel. And, mm -hmm. you know, you talk to put that away. Then uh, another layer of that is a black man. Mm -hmm. You know, we're, especially as black men, mm -hmm. I think that it's even more right. of a, a stigma. Is that, mm -hmm. is that the word yeah. I, I could yeah. use? About feelings and getting into your feelings right. and talking through and, and expressing your feelings. And then another layer of that for me was even in, you know, the church, you know, we're taught, you know, well, you walk by faith and you walk not by sight. Mm -hmm. And it's not about what you feel. It's not about a feeling. And it's not. So, again, for me, I'm not saying that everybody else took it that way. But I know for me, it took me a long time to just really be able to talk through some things mm -hmm. and be honest and open about how I felt about mm -hmm. some things. Mm -hmm. And so a lot of times I think in our relationship and I still um, I still I, I think struggle with this somewhat. Is, is just really saying, you know, when something's bothering me, just to really come out and be open and honest with you about it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I, I think that's true. I mean, you, we have come a long way. You've come a long way um, and being open and honest, being verbal about um, what it is that you're that you're feeling, because the the truth of the matter is that, you know, we do walk by faith. We are faith people. Yes, we are. Um, however, we also are faith people that have emotions and have feelings and know we're not, we don't live by them. We're not guided by them, but our feelings are real. Yeah. And so when they're not dealt with, they can, they can turn on you and, and become an enemy. So I believe that you have to deal with the feelings and anything that is kept in secret um, is very damaging, especially in, in a marital relationship, family thing, or anything. Wait, in a what? In a marital relationship. Okay. Uh, it's, it's, it was, the Mississippi came out. <laughs> marital. <See you. laughs> marital. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Okay. <laughs> so, yeah, oh, but, but, you. but you're right. But you know, one of the things that God told me, I was, I was, I was kind of, I think this was on a podcast we were talking mm -hmm. and we were talking about that. And, you know, the scripture says we walk by faith and not by sight. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I've heard it. We teach it. I've even taught it before that, you know, so, you know, sight is a sense. Sure. So, you know, we don't walk by what we, what see. we see. We don't walk by what we feel. feel. We don't walk by what we touch, ta touch taste, taste and smell and smell. Mm -hmm. But what one of the things that Holy Spirit revealed to me that emotions is not a sense. Correct. It's it's a totally so your emotions, the, all your senses they're more in the in the uh, in your in your flesh realm in the mm -hmm. in, as far as your body your physical realm, mm -hmm. but emotions come from a more of, of a soulish realm. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that God was telling me said you know God, that He gave us the our emotions, right. 
And, and, and I see emotions as indicators in our lives uh, to help us navigate through this world. In other words, whenever you, you're and you feel a certain way, and I, when I say feel, I don't mean a physical Flesh, right. f- a, a feel, that's for I feel cold. I'm right. talking about an emotional, mm-hmm. when you feel a certain way about a thing, um, you feel that way, like Tanya said, for a reason. Mm-hmm. And so e- even if that emotion is wrong, right. then even that is something that needs to be dealt with. And Absolutely. when you ignore those things and you just say, oh, I'm fine. Mm-hmm. You know, what's wrong? I'm fine. Mm-hmm. Everything's fine. It, it's What you're doing is you're, you're first of all, you're not being honest and, and being open to your true self. Mm-hmm. And even, like I said, if those emotions are coming from a wrong place, it doesn't give you the opportunity Mm -hmm. to really work through those emotions and and, get the help and support that you need. Yeah, that you need. Mm -hmm. That Mm -hmm. you need. And so, you know, they they gave a, a, is it an acronym? Is that? Yeah, acronym. Mm -hmm. So they gave an acronym for the word fine. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, she was saying that, you know, they were saying that that's a lot of times what we say when when, um, you're asked, you know, how are you doing? Oh, everything's fine. Mm -hmm. And they they said, fine, F I. You know, and so we're going to name this podcast, I'm Fine. I'm Fine. So I want to say, I'm not saying you're not fine, girl, because you are fine. Well, thank you. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> this is a different kind of fine. No, right, yeah. right. I got you. So, <laughs> so it says, I'm fine. So the F is, uh, it's, um, hang on, let me get my notes here. So faking, mm-hmm. F, faking, I, ignoring, N, neglecting, mm-hmm. and E, evading. evading. Yeah. And that is so good because that's what we're doing a lot of times. Mm-hmm. When I feel a certain way about, I don't know. Um, something I may have done or said. Yeah. Something that, that's come up with in just in life in general, uh, dealing with uh, the finances, dealing with the job, dealing with the kids. It doesn't matter, you know. Yeah. And I'm, I guess I always do that. I need to think of examples before we go on. I don't want because she always says when I say. Um, this reminds me of, a, of this uh, time in our life. She's like, oh, Lord, what is he going to say? <laughs> but I was just trying to think of something tangible, mm-hmm. you know, where I know, um, uh, I can't think of anything. But there's been times I know mm-hmm. where, you know, like you said, we, we've made a decision or you maybe you've done something. And I really wasn't fine with that. Right. But I think a lot of times, and this is another thing that, you know, I hate this phrase. I think I say I hate, hate's a strong word, but mm-hmm. I don't like when I hear people, because I understand what they're saying, but it, it, it implies something. I hear people say this all the time, happy wife, happy life. Right, right. And I think a lot of times in, in marriage, we say I'm fine. Mm-hmm. It's an effort just to keep the peace. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But the problem, here's the problem with that. When you say I'm fine just to keep the peace, then you're really not fine. Mm-hmm. You know, you're, you're not, uh, and you may be trying to keep the peace out here, mm-hmm. but internally there is no peace. Right. And uh, oftentimes when people do that for so long, you begin to le- to lose a sense of who you are, mm. a sense of um, your own uh, desires and, and a sense of, again, back to vulnerability, you know, a sense of your own needs because you keep suppressing them and suppressing them and you're not bringing them to the surface and your spouse is the person that more than anyone after after God that you should be bringing those things to yeah. and not suppressing those things yeah. and not dealing with them. Yeah. And, and so, you know, it, it just, it, it's like it creates this, you know, this this resentment towards your spouse. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, and again, because like I said, you're, you're saying something, right. but in your heart, in your, in your soul, you, you're upset mm-hmm. about it. You're you're frustrated about it. Um, you're you're not pleased with with what's going on, and then it affects everything else. Right. It affects the way you, um, you 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 interact with your spouse. Right. It, it it affects the way you interact with your kids. Mm-hmm. It affects so many things. It affects your faith because you begin to doubt what you say because you're lying. Mm. You're lying yeah. to yourself. You're lying to your spouse. Yeah. You're not being open, you know. You're yeah. not being truthful, so it affects a lot of things. Yeah. So and it, so I guess it's really important, you know, that you are. You know, it's nothing more. I believe more tragic, you know, than when you can't even be honest with yourself. Mm-hmm. And I think that's the thing is that, you know, some of us we've never really been honest and open with ourselves about ourselves. Right. And you know, you know, one of the things that we are big on is doing self self assessing, yeah. and just really saying, you know, looking at at you, taking a hard, a really good long look at me, mm-hmm. 
You know, because here's the deal, here's the truth of the matter, is no matter how hard I try, no, no matter how hard I pray, mm -hmm. no matter how much of the word I read, no matter how much of the word I speak, I cannot change Tanya. Right. I, right. There's nothing that I can do to make her a certain right. way. But I tell you what, I have complete and total control over who I am. That's right. And when I can get honest with myself and make some hard decisions mm -hmm. uh, in my, in, in my, in, within myself, mm -hmm. then I, I can free myself up and, and, and allow myself to work through and process through some things and be really fine in life, right. not faking, ignoring, uh, neglecting, neglecting and evading. And, evading. Mm -hmm. and that's what you're doing. You know, I, I'm the type of person, I, I don't like conflict. You know, and, and for a long, I think for a, a, a lot of, a huge part of our marriage, I think we were fine. We were saying we were fine to ev to evade, mm -hmm. to because like, I don't want to deal with it because if I deal with it, then we may get into an argument or, you know. Or we and, may not seem fine. Or we, we may, may not, not seem, seem fine to right. everyone but else. He, here's the deal. <laughs> I would rather, and, 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 and I'll say this, Tanya and I, we've never had like an argument argument. We've right. never had a, right. a, a blowout. We, I'm not saying we've never, we never, we, we don't always see. We have Yeah, we've disagreed. But we have never had a blowout, heated, screaming at each other, someone storming out of the house kind of Never had argument. one of those, praise God. Yeah. Um, but I say this, I would rather have 20 minutes of just, and I am not saying you should scream at your spouse or fuss, but what I'm saying is I would rather have 20 minutes of that and working through it mm -hmm. than a lifetime of inwardly resenting my spouse Correct. and never being able to right. really get to a place of happiness and contentment in my marriage mm -hmm. because it, it's hard to do that. You know, it's like it's like that person that, you know, from your childhood who you always had you always had beef with. And you know, you guys may see each other and you know, you speak to them, but you know, Right. Down in your heart, you're like, that thing. yeah, it's like, mm -hmm. whoa, I can't stand, you know. And and to have that with your spouse, yeah. It, yeah. you know, it, it, it's just a, a tragedy yeah. to, to live that way. Yeah. I think it's, um, it's sad, you know, to know that many people, you know, at the end of their work day, uh, they dread coming home. Mm. Or they they dread their spouses coming home. It's like, oh, my God, here she comes, here he comes, you know. And... It's, it's sad to live in that predicament where you are not happy in your marriage or with your spouse. You're not content. You're not at peace. You're not able to, you're, to be vulnerable, to be open. You're not able to really express your truths. And one thing that I think we have to remember is that we, no matter how hard the truth may be, when we express that truth, we're doing it in love. We're not doing it to hurt or to harm. We're doing it to actually help. And yeah. so one of the, um, there was a scripture um, that they read at the conference that I wanted to share. Mm -hmm. um, and it's Ephesians um, chapter four and verse 32. It says, instead, be kind to each other, tenderhearted, forgiving one another, just as God has forgiven you because you belong to Christ. So we have to be kind to one another, be tenderhearted to one another and forgiving. You're going to marriage is a lifetime of forgiveness because you're living with another person. You are becoming one with another person. And because you're in it, there are going to be some moments of needing to forgive. Yeah. I've, I've heard someone say that there is no perfect marriage because marriage uh, consist of people and there's no perfect people. There's no perfect people. Yeah. There's no perfect person. Yeah. So so that's the, so I guess what we flip it over now into is is how do you ensure that that you are fine? Not just faking, yeah. ignoring, uh, neglecting, neglecting and evading, evading. but you uh -huh. truly are fine, you're content. And the first thing I think you said that there is, is to forgive. What, was, what yeah. was some of the other stuff? It was, was one, be kind. Mm -hmm. That when I'm communicating my needs or I'm communicating something that may be wrong, I'm doing it in a way that's kind. You know, I don't have to scream, holler, accuse, and all of those things to say to you that you hurt me when you said this. When mm -hmm. you said this, that hurt. You know, when you did this, um, I didn't really like it. I didn't think it was right. You know, I don't have to say that in a way that is going to be damaging to you um, 
emotionally or mentally or putting you down or disrespecting you, dishonoring mm-hmm. you. Um, another was to be tenderhearted. For me, that means to show your spouse compassion, to be compassionate. Because, and you taught on this for so long um, about love and how if your spouse does something um, out of the will of God, sinful or hurtful, you know, we need to check to see, I need to check to see how you are. I need to show you compassion because apparently you're hurting in some form or fashion. Mm -hmm. Um, So that tenderheartedness, um, and then forgiving, being forgiven. You know, again, it's a constant thing. You should always be forgiving. You know, rather it be something big or something small, always show forgiveness. And I go back to, you know, how God always shows us forgiveness. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So one of the things you, you talked about earlier you, in that scripture, you talked mm-hmm. about communicating. Mm-hmm. And you guys know our, our definition or our our mode or our, our, the way, let me say, the, the right. way we communicate is we talk about everything, everything. Openly, openly, honestly, honestly and like, often. And often. Right. Yeah. Openly, yeah. honestly, honestly, honestly uh, and often. often. We, mm-hmm. About everything. So nothing's off limits. Mm-hmm. You know, and, and you have to just be honest, you know, and find a way. And like Tanya was saying, you don't have to say, you don't have to do it all mean, but you know, find a way, you know, maybe write it down, mm-hmm. you know, uh, and and let your spouse know, you know, this, when you said, like you said, when you said that, or, you know, uh, another couple that we follow, um, Kevin and Melissa Fredericks, Kevin on stage, Miss Kevin on stage, mm-hmm. you know, she was talking about how the gift that she got, Kev, her husband would give her all these gifts and she never liked the gifts. Right. And she said, for years and years, I never said anything, mm-hmm. but eventually, because I was starting to resent him. Mm-hmm. For these gifts. So she was like, I had to say, look, you know, I don't like any of this stuff. Mm -hmm. You know, and she said, I said it in a way that I wasn't mean. Mm -hmm. But, you know, it's it's like being, sometimes you have to have the uncomfortable Mm -hmm. conversations to Mm -hmm. be comfortable in your marriage. Right. And many people would say in an instance like that, well, you know, she's really ungrateful. You know, he's buying her, you know, these gifts. But the point was that she had not communicated to him that those were not things that she actually desired or or needed they were not her taste you know because and when it all came out honestly he was buying those things because they they were flashy and expensive and it made him feel good and look good to see his wife with those things. and that's a whole other that's a different discussion but really he was he wasn't getting them for her he was getting he was them, getting for, them him. for him but yeah. anyway that's another discussion yeah um but to not communicate that for such a long period of time, you know, caused a little bit of damage and they had to go back and do some work. Yeah. And um, I just I appreciate people like that who can be very open and transparent and vulnerable about those challenges that they have in their marriages because it helps the rest of us when we find ourselves in similar situations, which is what Marriage Matters is all about. That's yeah. why we're here, doing what we do. Yeah, so you got to communicate, communicate mm-hmm. kindly, mm-hmm. Um, and so, but it, to, to kind of piggyback on that, one of the things that David and Ashley said today that I thought was really great, uh, they said, where, uh, where, honesty flow, mm-hmm. where, where honesty flows, peace goes. Mm-hmm. So it's, it's hard for there to be peace in a marriage when you're not being honest. Yeah. Peace, peace always follows honesty. Right, right. And whenever, and that's, that's especially inward cuz cuz it's it's one thing to have a a image of or a facade of peace sure. but true peace sure. is internal yep. and if we're both in in internally at peace when we're both wusad you know <laughs> wusad right is yeah. that yeah. but when we're both at that point on the inside then right. we will have peace right. on the outside but i think for so many people it's in marriage the this looks peaceful right they, you look peaceful on Sunday mornings in church, and and everybody's looking at you, and it's like, oh, you know, um, you know, we want to be like Glenn and Tanya, you know, whatever. And, and that's why I always say you can't trust social media. I always say social media is ten percent of people's lives, and it's right. the good ten percent. Right. Right. You know, it's like you know, uh, me and Bay chilling, mm-hmm. but they're not gonna post a picture or the video of them and Bay fighting last right. night. You know, right. so right. but I don't want I want the I want the me and Bay chilling. But I want it to be real and yes, authentic. Authentic, yes. Sir. And that's that's yes, something, sir. you know what? That word has been another one of my mm-hmm. words is being authentic. I want to be my true self. Mm-hmm. I want to be able to if if um 
uh, how, how does it say? If if, I, if if I don't hear music, I'm not gonna dance. Yeah, that's good. You got what I'm saying? I don't want to live my life just you know being fake. And I always say I don't like I like being around people who I can be myself around. Yeah. I don't like being around people who I have to put on for. You right, know, right. You know, like, got to so. put on ears and and act the, the right way in a certain way. I mean, and there are times when you have when you do in different situations. Of course, you adjust. But I definitely get what you're saying, that I should always be able to be true to myself and be authentic. Yep. So we're going to wrap this up. So, you know, remember, don't just be fine. Don't be faking. Don't be ignoring. Mm -hmm. Don't be neglecting. Don't be evading the issues that are in your marriage yep. because you're not fine. Look, deal with it. Pencil in some time. Set aside some time where you and your spouse can really talk about the tough issues. Look, I know it's hard. I know it's uncomfortable. I know you don't want to do it. But I'm telling you, if you would do it, yeah. then it'll just make... You'll have some breakthrough moments in your marriage. I, you I want to. I, I don't know if I should share this. You may. I may but, need to talk to you about it before I share it, but... <laughs> <laughs> oh, Lord. See, here we go. I'm not going to mention it. I'll, I'll save it. I'll save it for another show. I'll mention it to you. I, I'm all about being authentic. But no, I don't want to put you on the spot. Yeah, I'm going to say, just don't put me on the spot. Let's discuss it But it's it just first. something I thought about. Okay. But anyway, so um, don't just be the, the first. Don't be, don't be fake. Don't be ignoring. Don't be neglecting. Don't be evading. Deal with the stuff. Talk about the stuff. Have the conversations. Be honest with each other. Like Tanya said, she said it earlier, there should be no secrets in marriage. Nope. And if there is a secret, if there's, something, if there's something in your marriage, if there's something in your life that you don't feel comfortable telling your spouse about, those are the things that you need to talk about. Absolutely. Those are the things you need to talk about. You need to communicate. And remember, we said when you're communicating, mm -hmm. we have to be kind. Mm -hmm. We have to be loving. Mm -hmm. What was the other one? Tenderhearted. Have to be tenderhearted. Mm -hmm. And and we have to forgive. Yep. We have to forgive mm -hmm. because you know you know when it comes to well you have to forgive. All right. So those are the things that that we want to talk to talk about today. So don't don't stop sweeping sweeping it under the rug. You know stop. You know we we did a, a episode a few months back about the elephant in the room. Hey, yeah. let's talk about the elephant in the yeah. room because I'm telling you if you can deal with that, it'll take your relationship to a whole, a whole another level. Nother level. Mm -hmm. So that's all we got for you today. Thank you again for joining us. You know, as always, we want to remind you, you know, we're always looking for, for show topics, show ideas, or if you just have questions maybe that you want us to answer or something that you want us to talk about, you can send those suggestions to info at marriagematters2us.com, info at marriagematters2us.com, or you can send us a text message at 337-415-9535. That's 337- 4159535. So you can send us questions or show topics. You will always remain anonymous unless otherwise specified. And we just always want to remind you uh, and thank you for yeah. sharing these 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 videos mm -hmm. um, and just and watching the videos. Right. But we want to remind you uh, to like our Facebook, uh, page, Facebook page, like our Instagram page, uh, at, at, at Marriage Matters 0526, and always subscribe to the YouTube page. Mm -hmm. And when you subscribe, make sure you click the notifications bell next to the subscribe button so you get notified every time we post a yes. video. And leave your comments, guys. We yes. love reading your love comments me. and just corresponding with you all back and forth. So. And, and so part of that, you know, I said this last week, I'll say it again, you know, our vision for this is to start a community. Yes. It's to start a community of people, like-minded people who are doing life together, bearing one another one another's burdens and helping each other out throughout life. And that's what it's all about. So we Absolutely. always encourage you to join the conversation and join mm -hmm. the community. Absolutely. And you can do that by leaving comments. You can do that by sharing this video. Um, and who knows, maybe if you leave some good comments, but we'll invite you to be on the show and, yes. we, can, and we can go further into those uh, discussions. Absolutely. So you got anything else? No, sir, I'm good. I just want to let you know I love you and I appreciate Aww. you. I love you too, honey. All and right. I appreciate you. I love you. I love you. So thank you for joining us for another episode of Marriage Matters. And remember, your marriage, marriage matters. matters. We'll see you next week.